Hey guys, Bingo Cat here. I'm bored. I need to upload more videos. Let's start out with this. So, I recently acquired this late 2008 aluminum MacBook. So, a little backstory behind this MacBook. My family purchased this exact MacBook in early 2009 to replace our 2003 Dell Inspiron 8500. Um, we basically just thought the Inspiron was becoming a little bit slow and we purchased an iMac about two years prior and we were satisfied with our iMac. So long story short, for our new laptop, we picked up a late 2008 aluminum MacBook. So my family has owned this for about 10 years. It used to be my family's just like a family laptop and then everyone in my family got our own individual laptops. So this transition to just being my mom's laptop. And so recently I upgraded, um, I upgraded my 2012 MacBook Air to an early 2015 13 inch MacBook Pro. So I went ahead and handed down the uh, 2012 MacBook Air to my mom. So anyways, I got this computer in return. So today we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this computer. So. The first thing I want to say about this computer is I think the the design of this computer has aged for the most part fairly well. I mean just the way it looks because if you look at Apple's newer MacBooks and I'm not even talking about just my early 2015 MacBook Pro. I'm talking about like the 2016 through 2018 MacBook Pros and the regular MacBook line too. Um, it still looks extremely similar. It's a uh, aluminum unibody design. So the way it looks like the aluminum and you know, that stuff still looks really good. One of the things that does make this laptop a little bit dated though, is it is thicker than I would say probably most modern day laptops. Like it's not insanely thick. Like it's still under an inch thick. I mean, it is not a bulky computer at all, but Compared to, I would say, probably most modern laptops, this computer is a little bit on the thick side, unfortunately. And so, if we go ahead and take a look at the bottom of the laptop, here's the bottom. I like it how, for this particular MacBook, you can actually remove the battery slot very easily. I just push this tab down, and then this will pop off. And as you guys can see, I put an SSD in here. This computer did not come with an SSD. I believe it wasn't even an option in this MacBook because, you know, it was late 2008 and SSDs weren't really common in computers. I would say before 2009 or so, even getting an SSD in a computer is pretty rare. So I actually put this in a few days ago, this particular SSD. Now on the left here is where a battery would go, but I don't have any battery in there because on um, the battery that was in there started swelling and bulging and that's not really what I call safe and it barely held a charge anyway. So went ahead and got rid of that battery. Um, this battery cover is unfortunately, it's also broken over here. It just won't stay shut. So I put, uh, <laughs> I put a piece of tape on here to hold the battery cover shut and it's kind of crude, but it works and I'd rather do that instead of buying like a new 30 plus dollar battery cover for a laptop of this age. Now something that I do like about this MacBook is that they use standard Phillips screws instead of some proprietary screws. So you can actually get inside this MacBook if you want to replace parts or repair parts inside of it. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at ports on this laptop, it does have a MagSafe port, which I wish modern MacBooks and MacBook Pros still have, but whatever. It has an ethernet port, which I really appreciate. I really wish more modern laptops would come with ethernet because believe it or not, there are people who occasionally still want to use wired networks, especially in a business environment. We also have two USB 2.0 ports, which, you know, I wish these were USB 3.0, but once again, 2008. We also do have a mini display port. We also have a mic in port here, and then we also have a port that's becoming increasingly rare in mobile devices. You may have heard of it. It is called a headphone jack. It allows you to plug in headphones instead of having to mess around with Bluetooth or find the proper adapter to plug wired headphones into your device. So 
Nice that a headphone jack, which eliminates the need for adapters or messing around with Bluetooth, actually exists in this laptop. And then of course we also have a lock slot here. And then over here we have a slot for the DVD slash CD drive that's in this laptop. Over here there's actually a little battery indicator where if you press this down, um, the little lights down here will light up to indicate how much battery life you have left on this laptop. But once again, this laptop has no battery. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at the laptop keyboard and the laptop trackpad, the trackpad is still fairly modern. I always love the trackpad on this MacBook. I would go as far as to say that this trackpad, even in 2018, is still better than the trackpads found in most modern Windows laptops. I have never, and I mean never, use a trackpad as good in a Windows laptop that you could find on a MacBook, even a 10-year-old MacBook. Seriously, that's how good this trackpad is. It feels so nice to glide around. It's extremely accurate. I do like it how it actually physically clicks down, unlike Apple's newer trackpads on their newer MacBooks. The actual keyboard, it's fairly comfortable to type on. It's nothing special, really. It's just chiclet keys. Unfortunately, this keyboard is not backlit, but that doesn't really bother me because unless I'm like sitting in a completely dark room or something like that, for most use cases, there will be enough light surrounding you that you can actually see the keys. I also like it how the power button up here is separate from every other key on the keyboard, you know, where they should place the power button. Now the screen, unfortunately, is probably one of the parts of this computer that has aged the worst. Um, it's a TN panel, and not only are colors and viewing angles not that great, it's an extremely glossy screen. I mean, see, look how reflective this screen is. It's almost like a mirror. And the screen does not go bright enough, in my opinion, so even at its brightest settings sometimes, if you're in a very bright environment, um, it will still be kind of hard to see what's on the screen. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and turn on this MacBook. It is running macOS 10.11 El Capitan, which is the last supported version of macOS released for this MacBook. You can unofficially install newer versions of macOS on here, but I never did that. Let's go ahead and turn on this MacBook and wait for it to boot up. booted up I'm gonna type in my world famous super secret password and I'll be right back all right so now we're booted to the desktop so let's go ahead and check out the specs of this laptop so it is running OS 10 El Capitan once again the last supported version of Mac OS for this MacBook it's a 13 inch aluminum late 2008 MacBook it has a 2 gigahertz Intel Core 2 dual processor which you know is not the most modern processor in the world, but it is surprisingly actually still pretty good for doing quite a few modern tasks. And then this also has four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, which, you know, four gigabytes of RAM, you know, it's not the best in 2018, but once again, it is surprisingly still usable for quite a few modern tasks. And then graphics, it has an NVIDIA GeForce 9400M. That Sounds impressive, but I've looked up benchmarks for this particular graphics card and it's not great, let's just say. Modern Intel integrated graphics will definitely smoke this GPU any day. And it only has 256 megabytes of VRAM, which, you know, is not great. But for the time, it wasn't out of the ordinary. And then for the display, it has a 13.3 inch 1280 by 800 display, which eh, 
It was all right back in 2008. If you do look at the screen closely, you definitely can make out individual pixels. And of course, nowadays you can get smartphones with much higher resolution display. And you see how small my smartphone screen is in comparison to this laptop here. So display tech has came a long way since 2008. And then storage, I have a 120 gigabyte SSD. And then I have four gigabytes of RAM installed with two gigabytes of RAM installed in each RAM slot. As far as what you can do with this computer nowadays, although you can't officially run newer versions of Mac OS, you can unofficially run, I believe, both um, Sierra and High Sierra on this computer. And it can probably run Mojave 2. So I actually only tested out one game on this computer. I might test more some other day. Um, I tested out Roblox and before y'all judge me and go, oh, you're like 24 years old and you play Roblox? What a loser. And it's called I only played Roblox because someone on my Discord server asked me to. So just shut up if one of you guys says that. Um, but Roblox ran fine but then again that game originally came out in like 2006. As far as other modern things you can do on here, a lot of modern software still does support um, El Capitan. All right, so let's try and open Safari. Well, I guess we're not opening Safari today because I clicked Safari and nothing's popping up. So far, the go to Launchpad and click Safari. Oh, okay. There it goes. I had to go to Launchpad for some reason to launch Safari. Now, if we were to just go to some basic websites, um, it's no surprise. Maybe I can't even go to basic websites. I'm clicking Google. Okay, there we go. So basic websites, as you guys can see, like Google, let's choose another website to go to. Let's go to YouTube now. Uh, it's taking a little bit of time to load YouTube, but it should eventually load YouTube. And yeah, here we go, YouTube's loaded. How is your YouTube experience today? I don't care. Um, so the YouTube website, it's loading actually pretty quickly and unlike my 2003 Dell Inspiron would load, you know, would load basically anything on the internet. So let's try and search for something on YouTube. Let's just search for my channel and we're going to want to try and play a 4K video. I doubt that a 4K video would actually work on this computer, but let's see how usable YouTube is. And of course, we got an ad that loads instantly because of course it does. All right. So let's see what video resolution it defaulted to. Defaulted to 720p 60 which it's not the best resolution in the world. It doesn't even give me a 4K option in this browser, but let's try 1080p 60 and see how this works. And let's skip forward to live action part of this video. Wait, what? What is this? Hmm. Let's, let's try this again. There's so much crap the video is not playing back well at 1080p 60 so far. Uh, maybe it will redeem itself? No, not really. It's kind of choppy. Yeah, it's really choppy at uh, at uh, 1080p 60, so we'd probably have to watch this at 720p 60. Now, if we go to one of my other videos that wasn't 60 frames per second, like this, I'm pretty sure it's just 30 frames per second. Hey guys, Bingo Cat here. So today and I will be reviewing my let's see what computer. video resolution it defaulted to. Here. June of 2013, so I've had this and let's... For and let's go to 1080p. I think I know 
Let's see if regular 1080p works fine. Yeah, regular 1080p seems to work fine. Um, 1080p 60 FPS doesn't seem to work fine on here, which is fine. I mean, you know, it's a late 2008 MacBook. Now, basically, though, if you can watch videos on the internet, you probably won't have any problems with any additional web browsing. To be honest, a lot of what you can do nowadays on a computer, you can just do straight through a web browser. So unless you absolutely need more powerful hardware in order to, you know, do things like, I don't know, 3D rendering or 4K video editing or playing the latest games at 4K 60 FPS, Maybe a computer like a late 2008 MacBook could actually serve you well, even though it is a decade old, because Core 2 dual processors, even though they aren't the most powerful CPUs in the world anymore, um, they did not age as horribly as Pentium 4 processors did. It's still fairly capable, assuming you have enough RAM, and of course, it would be a really good idea if you're using a hard drive to replace it with an SSD. For a Core 2 Duo machine or basically any computer, one of the best upgrades you can make is if you replace your hard drive with an SSD. Believe me, it will work wonders for performance on your computer. It might almost feel like you have a completely brand new computer and all you did was you replaced one component. Anyways, that was my late 2008 aluminum MacBook overview. I might make more videos like this someday when I actually upload a video for once. So yeah, goodbye guys.